Welcome back to Weekly Briefing. We are here with our panel of experts. Joining me in studio, Tim Parrish, a veteran business owner and conservative activist and member of Project 21. Jim Hansen, author of Winning the Second Civil War Without Firing a Shot. Derek Hawley, member of Project 21 and president of Reaching America. And John Hines, the One America News DC bureau chief. Joe Biden is hiding or being hidden likely due to the fact that Joe Biden said, let's go Brandon, when responding to a citizen who said it. It's been a black hole of information from the White House, so Tuesday this week, they posted this video, which is from a speech Biden gave last week. We should all be concerned about Omicron, but not panicked. If you're fully vaccinated, and especially if you got your booster shot, you are highly protected. And if you're unvaccinated, you're at a higher risk of getting severely ill from COVID-19, getting hospitalized, and even dying. So the best thing to do is get fully vaccinated and get your booster shot. That speech is from over a week ago, almost two weeks ago at this point, and they just posted it. Are they hiding Joe Biden? Absolutely. And that, that right there, again, just, just fear, just putting fear in people's butt. Um, the whole Joe Biden, let's, let's go Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The idea that he was on camera and didn't even realize that they were poking fun at him goes to show just how incompetent and how out of touch he is. And I think he's really, really senile at this point. Yeah. And uh, it's just unfortunate what's, go what's going on. And I think they are keeping him hidden right now because his numbers are the worst of any president in history. The vice president numbers are lower than any vice president. And I think right now they've got a, a real messaging problem. And I've probably taken this time to figure out what they need to do to just to kind of improve upon their situation because it's so bad right now in the country. Their situation is very bad. John, what do you think about basically the black hole? You've been reporting this week as well, and it's it's been a little quiet. What do you think? Oh, it's been very quiet, and uh, I think that the uh, the president is, is back in his basement, and he's back in his basement because I uh, spoke to pollster, uh, as you were mentioning, pollster John McLaughlin, and uh, they've been doing some recent polling and a poll of a 1,000 likely voters, 59%, 59% of those voters say that Joe Biden should take a cognitive test and make it public, mm -hmm. and he should take this cognitive test periodically. And so what this proves is that there is a perception, there is a perception, and oftentimes perception is a reality in politics, that Joe Biden is not quite all there. And I think that's probably feeding into the other significant poll number that he talked about, John McLaughlin, the pollster. 70% of likely voters surveyed said that the country is on the wrong track. That hasn't happened since Jimmy Carter. Uh, what was that, 40 years ago? I mean, that was almost a generation ago. So uh, some significant problems. And so, indeed, it appears they may be uh, hiding him uh, to unveil a new Joe Biden eventually, perhaps. <laughs> unveil a new Joe Biden. I would laugh, but that's actually quite scary. because they. Biden bot is what they could <laughs> <would be. laughs> I think they <laughs> have <laughs> that. Yeah. That yeah. Move. Just, yeah. yeah, it's a, a little bit weird. So I talked about this with Burt Jones earlier in the show, but I wanted to get the panel's take. Joe Biden broke another major campaign promise of ending the pandemic. He said, thank you very much. Hayes. Look, there is no federal solution. This gets solved at a state level. Oh, Jim, there's no federal solution. <laughs> Isn't that exactly what President Trump's been saying? It's also exactly what Joe Biden said the opposite of during his campaign. He promised, I will defeat, I will crush COVID, or COVID like a bug. And apparently that's a little harder than they thought it was gonna be. And they're stuck now with the problem that even though they're getting a whole bunch of people vaccinated, it's not working the way they thought it was supposed to. Well, they also, I think, don't want to end the COVID discussion <laughs> because they need it for the midterms and they need to use it. So they're now in this weird catch-22 where he's made this promise of, I'm going to end it, but I can't because I need it. And they're, bl they're blame shifting <laughs> the things that aren't working, but they need the freak out, the COVID hysteria, right. in order to have it as a campaign issue and to maintain the control that they like for their social engineering. I think what's interesting, too, how the CDC has now reversed in terms of what they, in terms of how long you have to quarantine. Right. And did this come, did this happen because Anthony Fauci? had COVID now, but now everything is, they're backtracking on everything. And it's just interesting to see what the messaging is going to be first of the year. 
none of it seems to make any sense. Like here in D.C., they removed the mask mandates for indoors for a couple weeks, and then they just re-implemented it. And now they're implementing vaccine passports here in D.C. But why? What, Tim, what do you think? What happened? Well, I think that Joe Biden's federal solution worked so well that COVID's little brother, uh, Delta and Omicron, showed up to the scene as well. And so now all the politicians are now trying to figure out what they're going to do uh, to keep this thing, like you said, at the forefront so they can scare people into, into supporting them. You know, they don't have the policies they can put in front of people and say, this is what we're going to do to make your life better. Uh, actually, we're just going to scare you into supporting us uh, and, and figure it out from there. And hopefully you give us all your rights in the process. No. <laughs> Jim says no. An interesting segment on Face the Nation this past week caught our eye as a panel discussed underreported stories from this year. Take a look. Tremendous negative impact on kids, and it's been an afterthought. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's hurt their dreams, their future, learning loss, risk of abuse, their mental health. And now with our knowledge, our vaccines, uh, if our policies don't reflect a more measured and reasonable approach for our children, mm -hmm. they will be paying for our generation's decisions uh, the rest of their lives. And that, to me, is the greatest underreported story of the past year. Tim, do you think the COVID policies and the effects they're having on children is an underreported story? Uh, no, it's like these guys uh, have been asleep at the wheel the entire time. Uh, we were saying this 18 months ago, and they just woke up and went, oh, wait, those guys are right. You know, I think the, the, the question I have out of this for, for this reporter is, uh, does this same principle apply to the federal budget, where we're now concerned our kids are going to be paying for this in the next generations to come? You know, we were saying this thing about learning loss, uh, particularly in Virginia, where we just had big election wins, education was a big topic. We talked about the school closures and the masks and the vaccine mandates and how it was going to impact kids and their education and their future and their ability to compete in a very dynamic job market uh, if they were going to be taken out of school the entire time. So these guys have been asleep. They're waking up and coming to the realities that we were realizing months ago. Right. My sister is a third grade teacher in Portsmouth, Virginia, and the children missed last year. She had a child that couldn't even trace his name. That's how bad it is right now. Wow. And now they want to shut schools down again. Well, we're starting to see conservative families, or not even necessarily conservatives, but not woke left families, pulling their kids out of public schools, either sending them to private schools if they can afford it, or some even figuring out how to homeschool. Do you think that this, the 10, 15, 18 years from now, conservative people, adults at that point, will then have an advantage because they'll be the only ones educated to actually run the world? Mm. John, what do you think? <laughs> well, I think I think this is spurring a uh, this is this is opening a lot of eyes because this is people are having to do things differently. And so you mentioned homeschooling. The numbers of people who have been quiet about homeschooling materials and things like that have exploded. And so you are getting an entire generation which is forced forced to do something differently. And so indeed we may see in uh, a generation or so we may see people who are perhaps more conservative, people who are more uh, used to doing things on their own, people who are used to exercising their own initiative, and people who are used to having, I think, more um, self-awareness and self-efficacy in a lot of the decision-making processes rather than being able to depend on an institution like a school. So it's creating a different mentality. So I think, I think you're right. How do you think this will impact the next generation? Well, I think it's going to be devastating to vulnerable communities, right. vulnerable populations, right. and um, that's the most concerning to me. Um, again, just looking at my sister, and she talks all the time about how these children, they struggle. And that right there, and now they're about to shut schools down again. And so I just, it's, it's very concerning, and I have no idea what's going to happen to the next generation of students. We're already behind right. other countries when it comes to education. This is going to put us even further back. Yeah. Right. I think Chicago you're right. schools, <clears throat> or a teachers union, just polled their members. 90% were in favor of a work stoppage starting next year over COVID and pay of and course. everything else. Let's yeah. stop work, but continue to pay me. <laughs> when we come back from the break, we'll discuss booster madness and the CDC. They just can't make up their minds. We'll be right back. <laughs> 